how old are we right let's go through what we're going to be using today now this was the card that i put in the group um for when lisa released this on the website um i mean there were some beautiful beautiful dt samples i thought for this particular set so i just think it's it's so different. I think that's why I like it. It's different to what Lisa's done before. These flowers are just so, so different. And depending on the colour that you use, they look different again. So I'm not making this. I'm making actually three. I know I said two in my little banner, but there's three. But I'm only going to stencil one lot. And I've already got all my others done and cut and embossed. So this is what we're using. Okay. So as I said embossing folder with its die and the layering stencils there's nine in here there's six by six stencils and i know some people say you only need four and i get bored after four but to be perfectly honest if you get bored after four why are you bothering because i just find it so mindful and it's relaxing and it's enjoyable and lisa does the stencils number wise to the detail that's on the flowers if the detail requires 15 stencils lisa will do 15 stencils i think 10 is probably the most she's done off the top of my head no christine actually one isn't purple so there and <laughs> um, yeah exactly jane the, the more detail that the flowers have in them in real life, then the more stencils you would need to put that detail into your artwork. And, I'm, and I think well, if it's worth doing, then it's worth doing well. And for me, Lisa is the best at this. I don't think there's anybody to touch her, if I'm honest. So that's what we're using today. I'm also using some embossing folders as my backgrounds in the garden it's one of my favorite embossing folders and i never remember to use it and i should because it's just so beautiful it's got so much detail in it like the little the little bee and the, the butterflies and it, it's just it's just fabulous and there are so many leaves in in lisa's armory if you like that you can always match some of the leaves up and put them on here so then I'm using the It's the Little Things scripted sentiments. And for me, these sentiments just add a little bit of class to your card. Um, I just think they're, they're just a perfect finishing touch. And the, what I like about them is that they've got script on part of the stamp and then just block capitals on the rest. And it's just fabulous. I'm also using the Layering Abstract Squares stencils. I'm using the bold phrases... With and of course, I'm using my all time favourites, the bubble squares. OK, let's get stuck into the stenciling then. Like I said, there are nine stencils in here. Now, on my on a couple of my cards that I'm doing today, I used grey on these stems. But then on the last one, I decided to change that and I went with green. Makes sense, doesn't it, really, for stems. But after I'd done the green, I thought... It's not really a dark enough green because my leaves are going to be quite um quite a vibrant green. They're a, a yellow blue mix and it's it's quite a vibrant colour. So I wanted these to stand out but but not sort of leap off the page if you like. So I thought I'd add a little bit of purple on top of the green. You don't have to go mad, but it just gives it a little bit more depth doesn't really change the colour just makes it a really deep mossy green so you've got the woodland moss anyway and then if you just add the purple on the top you'll get a really nice dark green colour which was what I was after so then I'm going to go in and do my leaves and again like I said I'm using a yellow blue mix so I'm going to add my yellow first and I'm using my wonder brushes for these just really for speed um and i wanted it to be quite a quite a deep yellow okay so i've done my yellow and then i'm going to come in with a blue now i thought i'd go with tranquil waters this time i usually use surfs up 
and it does give you a really nice green but I wanted this one to be a little bit deeper than the surf up but I didn't want to go as deep as the deep ocean and the deep ocean is really quite a deep blue so I didn't really want to go that deep so although I'm taking quite a bit of the ink off you'll see it is going to be really quite a deep green on these leaves which is exactly what I want normally I do sort of quite soft leaves but on this occasion I just want these to be really bright and vibrant and don't forget what I said when you're working in small apertures like this make sure you go in both directions when you're using your circular motions that way you catch each side of the aperture and you'll get ink everywhere rather than sort of ending up with perhaps a white shadow right number three now then the cards that i've already done haven't used purple haven't used pink i've gone really quite different for me so what shall i do today shall i i'm not going to do purple because i said i wasn't doing purple i'm going to go with the smaller flowers being yellow and orange and I might go with tranquil waters on the main on the main big flowers just because it's something different and I haven't used tranquil waters on any of the others so I just want this one to look a little bit different to the, the three I've already done okay so we're going with number four and again like I said I'm going yellow and orange on here so I'm going to use my orange to get the right one it's that one and i want this to be again quite vibrant so i'm going quite deep so you can see where i'm holding the brush this is giving me a lot more pressure on the head of the brush so it's enabling me to sort of squeeze that ink through those apertures onto that card and it's going to stand out and you're going to have a lovely little yellow border around those orange flowers now before i take it off i am just going to add a little bit of shading around the middles of those flowers just for, for no other reason than to make them look a little bit different so I'm just going in with the red in the centers so I've got um, mylar in the centers so I'm not sort of flooding the center with color I'm just coming off the edge of that piece of that central piece of mylar that's in the center of the flowers just to give it a little bit of interest added interest okay so you can see there i've got orange i've got a yellow base and i've got a lovely little red extra bit in the middle so now i'm going on to the main flowers now i'm going to start with surfs up because it's a, a lighter blue but i am going to add I'll make sure i've got my blue brush i am going to add tranquil waters on top of it i think so let's go in with the blue and i'm pressing quite gently here because i only want this as um a base of the flower i want the tranquil waters to be sort of the main color that you see okay so i'm going in both directions and just fill in that that aperture with surf up and then i'm going to come in and put the detail on those bigger flowers so i'm coming in from the center with this tranquil waters and again you can see i'm going holding the brush right right down at the bottom so i'm getting quite a bit of pressure on here i like this it's a lovely color this tranquil waters it's one of my favorites so let's just have a quick look at that shall i go a bit deeper i think i will so i want these to really i want them to stand out against that orange so i'm going to go a little bit deeper yeah I like that now then i'm going to put the veins on these leaves but obviously i want these veins to stand out so i'm going to go in with a purple just so that i can i can see the veins on the leaves what i do with the stencils before i wash them is i usually get an extra piece of card and then just go through every stencil again with brushes of the same color and take off the ink that's on the stencils so i'm using the ink that's left on the brush and i'm using the ink that's left on the stencils to give me a really pale um second image if you like so it's sort of like second generation stenciling 
like you can get second generation stamping then you can do the same with stenciling and it just gives you a completely different look and I'll show you one that I've that I've done in a second so I'm just adding my purple to this and you can see it's it's really quite quick you know it, it doesn't take any time at all so to say you get bored after four well if you're bored after four you shouldn't be doing what you're doing you're obviously not enjoying it because I just think it's amazing okay let's just have a quick look make sure I'm happy with where they are yeah they're fab I think these look like zebra flowers they're just they're just cracking I think they're fabulous so now we're going to put the centers in these big tranquil waters flowers and I'm going to go with yellow here because the centers are all going to be red so I'm going with the yellow and I am going really quite heavy so I'm taking quite a bit of ink off here and I'm not taking any off my brush before I go into that little aperture because I want those to really stand out in the centre of those flowers okay I mean how quick is this how can you get bored honestly right so in the centre of the flowers then with the red just to make these stand out and again I'm not taking any ink off my brush before I go in with the with the ink just so that they're really quite a, a deep vibrant red and that is stencil number nine and that is all your stenciling finished and how quick was that it's fabulous gorgeous gorgeous look at that so that look amazing and you haven't got to worry about the fact that you've gone over with the ink because you're going to cut that out with your dye anyway aren't you um i mean you can stencil straight onto your card top if you want to um and and you don't have to cut it out you don't have to emboss it so you know if you wanted to just stencil that onto a card then you could do but all i would say is if you're doing that if you're taking it um straight onto your card base or your sort of you, you know your bubble square base then mask off the edges of the um stencils so that you don't get this sort of overbrush and then you won't ruin your your card base so that's my stenciling and then obviously you would go ahead and you would die cut it and you would emboss it yeah i'm not going to do that today because it just takes up time and you all know how to do that anyway don't you so those are the i will use this on a different card i love that i'm really pleased with the colors on that and um, that tranquil waters is just it's just amazing so i'm gonna put that to one side i will use that on a different card now these are my card bases and you can see here's where i've used the pretty leaves and i've just cut it up to basically give me um a base to add my flowers to so you can see here where I've used my sentiment. I've already stamped that down and I've already put my base down. I've 3D'd this so that it stands a little bit proud. And then I'm going to 3D this onto this onto this sort of background that I've created for myself. So I'm sort of making a semi-frame, if you like, for that sentiment. But I think that sentiment now just sort of stands out a little bit more. Um, and it's just... I just think they're so beautiful I think they're classy do you know what I mean they're um they're not sort of your your huge fonts um they make sense you can read them they're, they're just they're just perfect so again it's one of those things that because Lisa's bringing stuff out as regularly as she does because obviously she has to she's a business um you get to a point where you forget what you've got and things get forgotten um and you don't use them as much as you'd like to so doing these lives gives me the opportunity to go back and look at some of those um things that i've not used or i've not used quite as much as i'd like to um and just get them out and, and give them a, a run for their money so to speak so there's my first card and you can see here I've put some of those beautiful glass domes that Lisa bought out some time ago. Uh, not in stock. 
because they're just too expensive to keep in at the moment. So that's my first one. This was my second one. And again, similar colours, but I've used um, Surf's Up and I think I just used Surf's Up bottom layer and top layer of those flowers. And then added the purple veins because I do think those purple veins really stand out. So I've used the brickwork folder and I've brushed it with Woodland Moss ink just to give it a sort of um, a rustic -y, mossy look, if you like. You'll recognise the um, ivy from the foliage set, you know, the one with all the leaves and this beautiful ivy. So I've chopped that up and I've put half of it up here and a little bit down here. So that when, when I add this down, see I've already I've already worked this out. I add this down and then I can cover the edge of these where I've, where I've snipped it. But it just gives it an extra little look. So if we just add that down and then I'll, I'll show you the last one. Right. So let's flip that over. And then we can add that down to hide the snip there and the snip here. And you can see I've already cut my sentiment with the bold phrases. And this is the background that I've done with the um, layered abstract squares. And all I've done is used, um, whilst I say I've used a green, it doesn't look green. It sort of looks brown, but it isn't. I've used a green, the blue and the brown and the um, purple. But it doesn't really look like that. But all I've done is just used the ink on my brush. I haven't re-inked at all. I've just used what's left on my brush okay so that's my second one i'll just pop that there and then this is the third one and this is where i've used the in the garden um embossing folder and all i've done is inked the folder in two different colors so i've used the juicy pineapple and the early sunrise and i've just randomly inked that folder and then run it through my die cutting machine and you can see that i've rounded the edges I've used my um, my punch for that. I mean, looking at the colour of it, this is the colour it was when I bought it. And this is the colour it is now because it's been sat on, on the windowsill for so many years. But it still does the job and it's perfect. And it just rounds the corners off and matches the bubble squares. So I just thought it was a nice little touch. Obviously, I've used the bold phrases and I've cut them out in a colour to match everything else. So you can see here that I've used the reds. And I've used one layer of red in a really soft colour and then I've gone quite deep with the second layer. And then again, I've added the purple veins to the leaves. But again, I've used orange and yellow on the smaller flowers because I just think it's a I just think it's a nice colour combination rather than sort of the pinks and the purples that I used on my original um, card that I put in the group when Lisa launched these sets. So then I'm going to add that to the top layer. And I just think this in the garden embossing folder just gives a really lovely background. Um, so there you go. There's my three cards. So you get three for the price of two. Buy one, get two free. And they're just different looks, aren't they? So this, this one is the one that I've wiped the ink off the, off the stencils with the brushes and I've just used whatever ink there was on the stencils so I've just brushed it on with the with the same colour brushes I haven't sort of contaminated cross contaminated my brushes I've used the same colours so this is purely ink that's left on the brush and on the stencil so do that before you wash it off or wipe it off or however you clean it and then you get extra extra images for your money and it's just a way of just taking a lot of the ink off before you go and wash it i will love you and leave you there so have a fabulous weekend thank you so much for joining me i really do appreciate you all turning up every monday and thursday thanks for watching everybody bye now mm -hmm.